Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Bluebot Tech Channel. Today, we're gonna to be going over a complete how-to on setting up Pi-hole on a Raspberry Pi. Now, the great thing about Pi-hole is this gets you network-wide ad blocking. It's gonna get rid of a lot of those pesky banner ads. It can potentially speed up your network and just make things all around greater. Let's get started. So as we said, today we're gonna to be setting up Pi-hole. So we're going to start off the same way we would setting up any Raspberry Pi. We're going to need to definitely format our SD card. As you can see, I've already done that. So we'll be using SD card formatter. But if you're using something like Mac, I would definitely suggest Apple Pie Baker. There's also a Pi's own Raspberry Pi imager. Once our SD card is formatted, we're going to want to head over to raspberrypi.org to get an operating system. So we'll go to downloads scroll down now noobs is a great choice if you're a beginner with raspberry pi it comes with a lot of uh, raspberry pis that you may buy an sd card already however we're not going to need that today so i'm going to go straight to raspberry pi os and again i'm not going to need a desktop if you want a desktop definitely download this version so you don't have to install it later but i don't need it so we'll walk you through how you set this up without a desktop so we're going to download the light version as you can see, I've already got a download. So we're going to get this zip file out of that download. We're going to extract it. And then here we have our image. So once we get our image, of course, if you don't know how to unzip a file, right click and extract all here to the desktop, you'll get a little window like this. And then it'll drop this file. So once we have our image, we'll want to use Balena Etcher. Again, we'll have links to all this in the description below the video. Here, we're gonna make sure our image is loaded here. So we'll move that. There you go. Sorry, flash from file. Pick our image. And then select where we want that to go. And we'll flash. Okay, so once that's done flashing, we'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, our flash is complete, so we're not gonna need Etcher anymore. We can go ahead and close that. We're not gonna need SD card formatter either. Now, Etcher did automatically eject my SD card, so I went ahead and reinserted that just so I could get back to here. Um, some crucial steps you're gonna wanna do before you put the SD card into uh, your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you want any kind of networking, so this would be especially a wireless setup. You're gonna wanna create a file like this. Again, we'll throw this up on our GitHub so you can get a quick copy of this. You'll need to put your SSID here and your password here. And then what you'll do is here in the Raspberry Pi folder or the SD card folder, you need to create a folder. Call that config in all caps here we'll say i network sorry network in lowercase go in there and then we'll drop that my network file in there we're going to need to remove that dot text so here name this get rid of that now i'm not going to be using a wireless connection just wanted to make sure you knew how to do it if that was the case however I'm not using a wireless connection I am gonna to want to be able to SSH in right away so what we'll need to do is we'll right click on the background here we'll say new text document we're gonna call that SSH we're going to get rid of that dot text extension except anything that pops up asking us if we're sure we want to remove that We'll drop that in here. So what this will do is once it boots up, Raspberry Pi is going to know that we want to enable SSH right away. Okay, so now we're all done here. What we're going to do is eject our card and pop that into our Raspberry Pi and give that a few minutes to boot up. Also going to go ahead and uh, connect that to my router via wired Ethernet. Okay, now that I've got my SD card plugged into my Raspberry Pi, we're going to head over to our router interface. As you can see, I set up uh, 
kind of a test network here on uh, old network or old Nighthawk. So what we can do to find the IP address of our device is go to our router interface, go to our attached devices. As we can see, we have our Raspberry Pi now showing up at 10.0.0.2. What we'll do is we will SSH into that. We'll be using a program called Putty. If you're not familiar with it, it's pretty simple. So all we're going to do is type pi at 10.0.0.2. Hit open. All right, now we got a little warning here that says the server's host key is not cached in the registry. So essentially, we want to cache that yes shouldn't have that pop up anymore all right so as you can see we're logged in with username pi and then now it's asking for the password the default password on uh, raspbian os or raspberry pi os is raspberry all right and as you can see we are now in so some kind of housekeeping things you may want to do before you go ahead and get started is go to sudo raspy-config. All right, and as you can see, it's gonna bring up some configuration options for us. All right, so if you wanna change passwords, we're not gonna go over any of that right now. Uh, boot options, localization options are going to be the most important thing you wanna check here. So we're gonna wanna change our locale. We're gonna wanna make sure this is set to our language pack. So we're gonna scroll all the way down to English. Yes. Going to go ahead and check that. As you can see, it's generating our locales. It may take a couple minutes, so. There go. Back to localization options. Time zone, we're definitely gonna update that. I am in America. They have the time zone there. York. Change our keyboard layout. This for me has affected passwords in the past, so definitely work. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe a new feature that they match that to your locale. I'm not sure. Uh, if you're going to use Wi-Fi, you're going to change the WLAN country, change that to US. Okay, so there we go. We can update if, uh, you know, obviously this is going to be running in your network, but I'm not too worried about everything being completely up to date, but that would be how you would do that. All right, so now that we have our Pi up and running, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Pi Hole site. So Pi Hole, you know, a network wide ad blocking. As we've already talked about, we're going to do a couple more things than just ad block. Now you can install this in Docker and you can install it in VM. Okay, of course, we're going to be doing this so we're going to go out to install a pie hole. Now, what makes this is super easy is this one step automated install. We're just going to copy this command. This is going to curl that URL and it's going to pipe it to bash and it's going to run everything for us. All right. So as you can see, it's checking everything out right now. It's making sure everything's good to go. We have root capabilities as the Pi user. We're essentially just going to give this a couple minutes and let this run. 
and it's going to go through a lot of things. Now, we may speed through this a bit, but we'll stop anytime there's a question and I will definitely explain what exactly is going on and what it's asking. Okay. It needs a static IP. All right, so here on the choose an interface screen, you're going to want to choose whether you're using wired ethernet, which you would choose the ETH0 like I'm doing right now. Now, if you're on Wi-Fi, I would assume WLAN0 would be already checked for you if you were working over Wi-Fi. However, if it's not for whatever reason, please switch that now. Um, and the way you can move around in here is tab key. So just tab down to OK and hit enter. Now you're going to select your upstream DNS provider. So that means instead of using your ISP, whether you're in, in the States, something like Comcast or Verizon, uh, instead we're going to use something that you've selected. So if you, you know, know anything about any of these different top level DNS providers, so Google or OpenDNS, Quad9, some of them are more privacy minded. So do your research, uh, pick what you're more interested in. Uh, for right now, we're gonna go with Cloudflare. Okay, and here's where you set up some add-on or third-party block lists. And we can add anything we want after the fact, so we'll just allow these two for now. So we'll click OK. And protocols we're using, block ads over both IPv4 and IPv6. Okay, and do we want to use our current network settings? So this is saying, do you want to use the address that was given by your router? We're going to click yes, and I will show you how in a you know, kind of net gear router or hopefully home use router, how you would go about finding that and setting that in the router. So yes, and okay. You wish to install the web admin interface. Uh, yes, we do want that. That's definitely nice to have. So, okay. Install the web server. Yes. Okay. And generally, you're going to want to go with all the recommend settings. So, log queries. Yep. We want that. Now, select a privacy mode for FT. Okay. So, what this changes, and I'll show you how to change this in the dashboard once you've already set this up, is in the logs, they can be pretty verbose, which is show everything, or less verbose. So, Disable statistics, so we're gonna probably want to show everything. That's how I run my personal pie hole. That may be how you want to do yours, but you know, that's a personal choice. Okay. Okay, it's gonna continue setting up. Configure your devices. Use the pie hole as their DNS server. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and say okay to that. Now this screen is more important. You're going to definitely want to grab this. So as you can see, to get to the admin interface, you're going to go to um, HTTP your IP slash admin, or you can, and you're using router is smart enough to set a domain like this. Use HTTP pihole slash admin. Now the main thing you're going to want to take note of pop up a text document here is you're going to want to na make note of this web login which here we go copy that here smaller but definitely want to know your password Okay, now that that is all set up, we should be able to go to our n002 slash admin. Okay, now you can see our uh, total queries are zero. So we are going to need to set this up so that our DNS is used by this. Okay, now that our pie hole is up and running, we're going to want to go back to our router, make sure we set everything to use our pie hole as our DNS. So in a Netgear router, you're gonna go to something like internet, 
And as you can see, domain name server. As you can see, this is using a pie hole on my actual network, but we will change these, say 10, zero, zero, two. And that's what our pie hole is running at. So apply that. As you can see, it's updating right now. And what we're going to look for is to eventually start seeing queries coming in. We'll let this update real quick. Okay, and now that that's finished, you can see we have queries coming in. So the computer I am using is actually on this test network with the Raspberry Pi. So what we should be able to do is log in, take our password from here, in. And as you can see, we're now logged into our management interface. We can go to our query log and we can see what kind of things are making queries. So as you see, you're going to see a ton of stuff. So beacons, OAuth, clients, um, reverse, uh, ARP lookups, LastPass. As you can see, I'm using LastPass. So that's popping up in there. Now, the cool thing about this green, obviously good to go. Let's see, is anything actually being locked? Not at the moment. Okay, but a great site to test on is speedtest.net. Okay, as you can see, we're not getting much in the way of ads. Now watch, go ahead and close that for now. If I go over here and disable this for, we'll say, 30 seconds. That should give me enough time. We'll go back to speed test. As you can see, ads popping in everywhere. So pretty cool thing about Pi-hole is it takes care of those ads for it. So brush the page and the ads are gone. Oh, give it a second. As you can see, it's starting to block the ads again. All right, I hope that was easy enough to follow along with. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. Uh, definitely check the description. We should have everything in there for you. Also, if you need some more assistance, we have a Facebook page, the Blue Bot Tech channel. Reach out to us on there as well. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.